So on this slide we talk about space with functions. So this is just like uh, manifolds. So a space with functions over a field K is it nothing but a topological space. Yeah, so this topological space has subsets and on each subset we have this ring of functions. And that is precisely what it, we are going to write down here. So this is more clear when I write down the examples. But uh, let us just uh, focus on the definition for now. So space with functions over a field K is a topological space X. So space with functions over a field K is a topological space X together with for each subset U of X there is a sub algebra sub K algebra so for each U subset of X there is a sub K algebra this uh, O of U of functions which act on U and end up in K. So if U is, is made up of certain number of sets, it's a union of sets, then the function is said to be regular on the entire U if it is regular on each of its individual components. So let us write this down. So U is made up of these small sets U alphas and F is, F is called regular on U if it is regular on each of these smaller sets. So obviously you can think of F as polynomials, you know, if they act on a space, you plug in some values and you end up in K. So the first example is uh, infinitely differentiable continuous functions. So let us write down the example. So the first example is infinitely differentiable continuous functions. So these are functions, you know, just think of them as polynomials or, yeah, for our case polynomials, but for this example you can also think of trigonometric functions or exponential functions, but uh, we are only concerned with polynomials. So the second example is a quasi-affine algebraic set over an algebraically closed field K. is a space with functions over k. So you know quasi a final algebraic set consists of functions like f over g and these also act on space u and take it to k. Yeah, you just plug in the values and you get a number and that number is in k. So now we want to talk about morphism of spaces. So morphism of spaces is a continuous mapping. So let me write this down. This will be more clear when I draw the figures. So 
So morphism of spaces is a continuous mapping. And you take a fix a subset U of Y. Yeah, and then you take the inverse image of that subset in X. So first let me write down the details. So you fix U open in Y. And you have the following onto map. Yeah, so all these spaces, both these spaces X and Y have functions over K. Yeah, so you get, so since map F is continuous, you can find F inverse U in X. And you get functions, essentially in O F inverse U. So pictorially it makes perfect sense. So you have space X, you have space Y, then you have a subset U in space Y. So this is subset U I fixed in space Y. Let me label this Y, this is U, this is space X. Function F goes from X to Y, so F inverse lies in X. So this rust color is F inverse of U. This is function F. This is F inverse of U. Now I'm going to write the corresponding ring of regular functions. Yeah, and there is a map in the opposite direction now. That is pretty much it. So an algebraic set X over an algebraic field K. So we are going to define now an algebraic set. So algebraic set is nothing but a space with functions. So it is a it is a space with functions and if x is a finite union of some sets each of those sets is a affine algebraic set over k. So let us write down what I have said. So you have this algebraic set X over an algebraically closed field K. It is number one a space of functions over K such that if you can write X as a finite union then each UI is isomorphic to a A fine algebraic set. each of these UIs is isomorphic to a fine algebraic set over K. So look how it mirrors the construction of manifolds.
So now we want to add some remarks from topological spaces. So if X is like given as a union of certain sets, then why a subset of X is closed? Yeah, if and only if this Y intersection with each of these sets which constitute X is closed. And similarly for open sets. And you have the same for regular sets. So now we have the same for regular functions. So a function is regular on this set V which is open in X. If it is regular on each of these small covers intersecting with this set V. Yeah, so it is regular on this set V if it is regular on each of these small covers. So F has to be regular on each of these V intersection UIs. So each of these uh, small sets is, which constitute X. Another remark is a closed subset of an algebraic set over K is an algebraic set in a natural way because any closed subset of an affine algebraic set is an affine algebraic set. So yeah, we are just saying closed subset of an algebraic set is an algebraic set. And then we can talk about, after this we can talk about a open set. So I will just write down what I have just said. A closed subset of an algebraic set over K is an algebraic set in a natural way because any closed subset of an affine algebraic set is an affine algebraic set. So the purpose of this slide is to show that any open subset of an algebraic set is also an algebraic set. In the previous slide, slide we showed that the closed subset of an algebraic set is an algebraic set in a natural way. 
and here we are showing that open subset of an algebraic set is an algebraic set. Now you already know that if you take a single open set we have shown it to be closed or equivalent to a affine set by this uh, process of localization which we discussed before how to take an open set which has been defined by a polynomial and adjoining it uh, and basically forming a affine algebraic set out of it so the only thing to show here is that this open set is a finite union of standard open sets so if it is a finite union of standard open sets then you have all these standard open sets and you can close them one by one yeah like we did before while constructing uh, localization so we just have to show that part and uh, we have already shown these us are a fine yeah this where s is a polynomial and we showed how to define us so let us show this so essentially what we are trying to show is so if x is a topological space we say it is quasi compact if every open cover of X has a finite subcover. And this is what we need to show. So the lemma is every quasi affine algebraic set is quasi compact. I will repeat it. Every quasi affine algebraic set is quasi compact. So now the proof, you take set U as the union of US alphas, should be US alpha here, where each S alpha is a polynomial. So US alpha is defined as all the points of X where the polynomial does not vanish. So let us draw a figure of this. So you take these four points out and this is how you get US alpha. So equivalently you can see 
for in the figure x minus us alpha is just the four points and at those four points they lie on the polynomial equation s alpha equals to zero and that is what it means essentially so it should be, I should write instead of x minus u I should be precisely writing it x minus us alpha or in fact x minus u would also consists of those point yeah for all alpha this s alpha p is 0 so what is the ideal so ideal is s alpha all alpha yeah so I should be writing x minus u only not x minus u alpha so x minus u because we are talking about all these polynomials s alpha So this ideal is finitely generated because we are in a Noetherian ring. And that is precisely the key. So you are basically saying the ideal is generated by all these polynomials which cut x to make open sets out of it. And you could have infinitely many polynomials but all of them are finitely generated because the basic ring is Notharian, but that is uh, yeah, and that is precisely it. You just select those finite number of polynomials which generate this ring, and uh, those polynomials will be precisely which will form the cover of U. So these polynomials S1 to Sn will now generate the cover of U. Yeah, so now you have the set u equals to this union of us1, union us2, union all the way to usf.